So now let me discuss to you the rules and regulation or basic rules and regulation when it comes in badminton. Okay, so the official rules and regulation of the game follow the International Badminton Federation or IBF. So IBF po yung nagbigay ng rules and regulation na ito. Ang sinusunod natin is yung rules and regulations na ginawa ng International Badminton Federation or yung IBF nga natin na tinatawag. So let's start this. Let's continue this discussion. So, ang first rule natin is a tossing for a serve. So, before the match, or before a match begins, opponent can toss a coin, spin a racket, or toss a shuttle to determine who shall get the choice of serve or side. So, kahit sa namang sport, kailangan natin ng parang ano, ng toss para malaman natin kung sino ba yung magsaserve o kung sino yung pipili ng court, no? So, nang sa ganun, makita natin or malaman natin kung sino nga ba yung unang titira sa dalawang opponent. Okay? So, it's either toss ko yun yan, spin the battle, or um, spin a rocket, toss a shuttle. So, depende doon sa game or depende doon sa referee kung paano yung gagawin niyang toss. Okay? So, that is a tossing for serve the next one is the scoring okay so the rally point system is used in scoring the badminton game which means by fault committed by the serving or receiving teams gains points so syempre dito sa badminton natin meron tayong tinatawag na love pag sinabi natin love hindi yan yung pagmamahal na nasa isip nyo ha okay pag sinabi natin love it designates a score of zero that okay, followed by the love all. It is called when both opponents and teams have a score zero. Pag dalawa kayong opponent or dalawa kayong team zero, ang tawag doon ay love all. Followed by the inside. Inside is called for the serving player or team. So sa mga magsaserve na player or team, ang tawag sa kanila ay inside. Outside naman, pag receiving player or team. Okay? So alam niyo yung difference. Pag inside, sila yung magsaserve na player or a team. Pag outsave naman, sila yung magre-receive na team or a player. And then the last one is the game point. Pag sinabi natin game point, it is the point that the server won which result top the server is winning the match. So all the double game as well as men's singles are played to 15 points. A woman's single games at 11 points. Point. So, tandaan lang ka, sa badminton natin, pag, ma, pag men singles yung pinaglalabanan, 15 points yung kailangan na score na matin para manalo. Pag naman sa women's naman, 11 points yung kailangan natin matin para manalo yung isang team. Okay? So, that is the scoring in badminton. Okay, so now let's move on to our next rules and regulation, ano? which is setting the score. So class, if the score tied at 13 all or 14 all, the side that first scored 13 or 14 has the choice of setting or not extending or not setting the game. Pag sinabi natin setting class, another term yan is extending. Ayan, nakita nyo naman dito, naka-close and open parenthesis, ano? So another term ng setting is extending. Okay, so when the game has been set, both score revert to zero and the player must win according to the condition. So class on the end, pag nag 13 all or 14 all, yung isang um, game, kung sino yung unang nakascore na 13 or 14, sila yung mamimili kung i-extend pa ba nila yung game or hindi na. Okay, so ganun lang yun. Pag parehas kayo yung naka-13 all or 14 all, kung sino yung unang maka-14, sila yung mamimili kung mag-extend pa ba yung game or hindi na. Pwede naman nilang tapusin na kaagad yung game. Okay, so when the game has been set, both scores revert to zero and a player must win according to the condition illustrated below. So ayan, so class, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na magbabalik ulit sa zero yung game then a player must win according to the condition illustrated below okay so class yung at here is the point in game okay so pag 11 yung point sa game nyo at parehas kayong nag-tie parehas kayong nag-9 for example yung game nyo may be set into 3 points pag naman points ay 11 din pero parehas kayong 10 all yung game natin may be set into 2 points pag naman 15 points in game natin then yung score na ay parehas 13 all 
then 5 points naman yung kailangan ninyong ma-attain na puntos. Pag 15 points din again yung point in game natin, and then yung score nyo ay 14 all, game may be set into 3 points. Okay, so that is the setting score when it comes in badminton. Okay, so now let's move on to the change of needs. Okay, so change of needs. Ano ba yung change of needs na yan? Change of needs. So players change ends of the court at the beginning of the second game and at the beginning of the third game if the third game is necessary. Okay, so class, um, sa second game natin, automatic dapat magpapalit ng court each player. Pero kung sa third game, kahit hindi naman na kung wala naman siyang third game. Pero kung may third game tayo, it is necessary. If meron talaga tayong third game na tinatawag, in third game, players change ends when either player first raises 8 in a game of 15 points or 6 in an 11 point game. If players forget to change ends as prescribed by the rules, they should do so as soon as mistakes are discovered. Okay, so class, in like what I said before, if necessary yung third game natin, pag dumating na, pag ang puntos na pinaglalabanan nyo ay 15 points, pag dumating na sa 8 points, kailangan magpalit nung dalawang player. Or kung 11 points naman yung pinaglalabanan nyo, pag dumating na ng 6 points, kailangan magpalit ng player or ng court. Okay? Hindi ng player, ha? sorry. Medyo, nag, medyo naging magulo. Ano? Ulitin natin para mas malinaw. Pag 15 points yung labanan, pag tumating tayo ng 8, kailangan nyo magpalit ng court. Okay? Ng ka-opponent mo. Pag sa 11 points naman yung pinaglalabanan nyo, pag dumating na tayo ng 6, kailangan nyo magpalit ng ka-opponent mo or nung opponent mo. Okay? So that is the change of needs when it comes in badminton. So now let's move on to our next rules and regulation when it comes in badminton which is more on service rotation for singles and doubles. So class, singles serves and receive in the right service court when the server score is an even number. So class, always remember that the single serve and receive in the right service court when the server score is an even number. Pag odd number naman yung um, server score natin is odd number, the player serve from the receive in the left service court. Pag even number, right service court. Pag odd number, left service court. Lagi nyong tatandaan yan when it comes in service rotation for singles and doubles. Okay? In doubles naman class, the service is determined by the serving team score and by the court possession of each player at the beginning of the game. So as you can see yan class dito, naka-highlight na para mas mabilis niyong matandaan. The service is determined by the serving team's score and by the court position of each player at the beginning of the game. So, magkaiba yung service ng singles and then yung doubles class. Okay? So, na-discuss ko naman na sa inyo kanina kung ano yung service ng singles. So, now, ngayon, na-discuss ko na rin naman or nasabi ko naman na sa inyo kung paano yung magiging service when it comes in doubles. Okay. So, in the first service in each half inning or inning is always from the right service court to the opponent right service court. So, class, another thing. In the first service in each half inning or inning, it is always from the right service court to the opponent's right service court. Court. So, ayan, naka-highlight ulit, ano? Always from the right service court. Next naman natin is the server change court after every point his team wins. The receiving side does not change court. So, like what I said before, the server change court after every point he, of his team wins. Pero hindi nagpapalit doon yung receiving side, ano? Hindi sila nag-change ng Courts. Okay, so the next rules and regulation when it comes in service rotation for singles and doubles is 
So class, always remember that when the score is even at the beginning of a half inning or inning, the players who started the game in the right court should be in the right court and should serve first in that half inning or half inning na tinatinatawag. Kung sa right ka nag-serve, sa therefore, sa right yung court mo. Kung sa right ka nag-start, therefore, sa right yung court mo. The winning team serve first in the next game. In double matches, either player of the winning side may serve first in the next game. And either player of the losing side may position in the right court to receive. So class and dance singles, ang unang manalo or yung kung sino yung nanalo, sila yung mag serve. Ganun sa singles. Sa doubles naman, kung sino yung, ano, yung panalo, kahit dun sa kung sino man sa dalawang player na yon kung sino dun sa kanila yung pwedeng mag-serve. Ulitin natin para nang mas malinaw ano. Sa singles class kung sino yung um, nanalo sila yung mag sila yung unang magso-service sa next game nila o sa second game. Sa double matches naman either a player of the winning side may serve first in the next game. So that is the rules and regulation when it comes in service rotation for singles and doubles. So, so let's move on to our next rules and regulation when it comes in badminton and this is all about the faults. Okay, so class a team that violates the rules is charged with a fault. If the serving team faults, side out results. If the receiving team faults, points are for the serving team. Okay, so it is fault when, so like what I said glass, when we say fault, ano, it is a loss of service, hand out for the serving, or loss of point for the receiving side. Okay, so it is fault when, so I have here a different examples of faults na may encounter nyo sa badminton. So the first one is service is illegal or not correct. So class, mali yun, fault yun. Pag hindi tama yung service mo, pag hindi tama yung execution or hindi pumasok doon sa opponent's court, therefore, fault yun or hindi tama or mali yun. Okay? So, the next one is if the server in an attempt to serve misses the shuttle. Okay? So, class, madalas na nangyayari sa atin to pag naglalaro tayo ng badminton, kahit anong sipat natin dyan, may time talaga na hindi natin makikita or hindi natin mapapalo yung shuttle natin. So, pag hindi natin napalo, therefore, fault yun. And then, the third one is, if on a serve, the shuttle is caught in or on the net. Okay, so class, once na during the serve, pag yung shuttle natin is na-shoot ng si net or I mean na net, therefore, it is considered as a fault. Okay, so tumama sa net, then bumalik dun sa court natin, consider siya as a fault. Pero pag tumama naman siya sa net, then dumaples lang siya dun sa net, then pero, pero napunta pa lang sa opponent's court natin, therefore, in naman yun. Correct yun. Okay, so ulitin natin. Pag sinerve mo, then tumama siya sa net, then bumalik dun sa court mo, therefore, fault siya or consider siya as a fault. Okay, so I hope you understand that. Then the next one is, if in a play, the shuttle lands outside the boundaries of the court, passes through or under the net, fails to pass the net, touches the roof, ceiling or outside walls, touches a player or a dress of the player, touches any object or person outside the immediate surroundings of the court, is caught and held on the racket during the execution of strokes. So, tandaan lang class, once na yung shuttle natin ay tumama sa mga different sa madalas, sa mas mabilis na salita o sa madaling salita lang. Once na tumama class, yung shuttle natin sa mga bagay around doon sa ating mismong court, considered siya as fault. For example, tumama siya sa ceiling, fault na yon. Pag tumama siya sa wall, considered na siya as fault. Okay, so ganun lang. Ganun lang yung gustong ipaliwanag or ipahiwatig ng number 4 natin. And then the next one, number 5. If the initial point of contact with the shuttle is not the striker side of the net. 
and then the last next one rather if when the shuttle is in play a player touches the net or its support with racket or body except on follow through so class and ano once na in play during the play pag yung shuttle natin ay nahawakan ng ating player or ng ating opponent considered din as a fault. Okay? O kaya pag yung player naman natin in has, um, hindi inaasan or accidentally na nakakapit sa net, consider na siya as fault. Okay? So, or it's support with rocket or body, except on follow through. Okay? So, sa follow through pwede tayong gumapit ng support ng rocket or ng body natin. Okay? Pero pag sa hindi naman follow through yung um, gagawin natin, consider siya as a fault. Next naman natin is If during the game, a player deliberately distracts an opponent by an action such as shouting or making gestures. Okay, so class, kadalasan natin ito na experience ano? Especially during the game, pag sobrang na nagkakainitin na to the point na naghihiyawan na yung mga ka teammates natin or yung mga kalaban natin ano, naghihiyaw na, sobrang inat na ng game eh, no? so considered pala siya as fault pag nagkakaroon ng distraction or pag sobrang nadidistract yung kalaban natin dahil sa ginagawa natin ganong action or talagang nakakairit ang action or nakakadistract na action considered siya as a fault Okay, so class, always remember, you know, when it comes in badminton, this is more on focus. Okay, more on focus talaga. Dapat focus ka talaga sa game mo. Focus ka sa kung ano yung gagawin mong susunod na technique. Focus ka sa magiging strategy mo. Focus ka dun dapat sa mismong shuttle or sa mismong game. Okay, so kaya sobrang higpit ng mga different um, officials natin when it comes in badminton dahil ino-observe nila yung pagiging disiplinado ng isang player okay kaya automatic once na meron kang ginawa ng misconduct violation consider na siya as fault kasi nga may tendency na ma-destruct yung kalaban mo so once na destruct siya malamang matatalo siya diba? matatalo siya sa paraang hindi niya deserve dahil sa panggugulo ng ginagawa mo, right? Okay, so once na nakakita yung umpire ng misconduct behavior or misconduct um, action considered na siya as a fault. Okay, so now let's move on to our next rules and regulation which is all about the let's So class, when the let occurs, players who served serves again. So the following are considered lets. So the first one is a shuttle or a player from an adjacent court encroaches, thus interfering with player concentration. Followed by the shuttle after passing over the net becomes caught in or on the net except during the service. Okay, so class, ano a shuttle after passing over the net becomes caught. Okay, so tandaan lang yun. After passing over the net, or a shuttle after passing over the net becomes cloth. Okay, then the third one is a shuttle hits an obstruction that hangs over the court and is lower than the recommended 24 foot ceiling height. And then during the service class, the receiver and server both fault at the same time. So the following also are considered let's when the server serves before the receiver is ready and then the last one if a line judge is not present and the umpire is unable to make decision considered it as a let okay so that is our different rules and regulations when it comes in badminton game so i hope na medyo nagkaroon kayo ng idea or naging aware kayo so kung ano ba yung mga different rules and regulations when it comes in badminton okay so there you have it and also that is the four common strokes in badminton and that is the basic rules and regulation when it comes in badminton yan so na discuss na sa inyo sir rg yung mga different common strokes when it comes in badminton binigyan niya na rin kayo ng mga different techniques or steps or on how to execute that particular stroke 
Okay, so na-discuss na rin sa inyo na Sir RG kung ano-ano nga ba yung mga ilan sa mga basic rules and regulations when it comes in badminton. So that's it. I hope na marami kayong natutunan for today's video, no? So I know for sure na marami kayong naisulat dyan sa inyong notes. And then pakicheck na lang natin kung tama ba right after this video yung naisulat natin or i-review natin siya ng talagang maritin sa utak natin yung mga sinasabi ni Sir RG sa kaniyang video. Okay? So I hope once again na marami kayong natutunan sa lesson natin for today and magkita kita tayo sa ating next episode ng ating online kwentuhan. So thank you everyone for watching! Thank you for watching! Thank you for watching mga kapi!